Hello, hello, my name is Emma and welcome to Mushroom Musume. So Mushroom Musume is basically a story about raising a mushroom child, I think, maybe. So the actual description is um, that, well, to shorten it, you're a lonesome recluse who has a desire to raise a child. And then there's the witch of the woods that overhears this and decides, you know what, why not just give this person a pile of dirt, a pot of dirt, a pot of dirt. And with that, you raise a mushroom child, and that is going to be your daughter. I think it's like a game where your own actions are like, oh, what, how do I want to raise my child? You know, how does like parenthood affect a child? Stuff like that, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't quite understand the mechanics of this game. When I looked at it, I couldn't quite pinpoint it, but I might have just skimmed over it. But what else is there to do except start the game? It's also a good game for me right now because the weather is a little bit cloudy and that makes me a little bit sleepy and I think this is a good game to just chill to. Once upon a time, there was a humble recluse. Though they had no need for society, they did often find themselves home to a loneliness that they could never quite shake. In the morning, the sun would rise. At night, it would set. The recluse would observe this splendor, knowing that the sight would be made all the more beautiful by having someone to share it with, especially a child. It wasn't that they desired a relationship. Perhaps it was a flame that burned in them one too many times, or perhaps they were simply disinterested. No, a child, that's what they wanted. Someone to take care of, to teach. Unfortunately, it was a longing that could not be found, not in these woods alone. However, we are never quite as alone as we think, are we? One day, a witch appeared, as if drawn by the intensity of the recluse's desire. The lumber that the recluse had spent the morning gathering slipped through their hands as they spotted her, the witch of the woods. She began to speak. You desire a child, yes? For some, those are quite easy to come by, but not you, it would seem. Let us make a deal, then. If you do these three simple chores for me, I will present you with the daughter of your very own. The recluse, caught up in the moment of naivety, quickly agreed. The witch, knowing that the recluse was destined to accept, simply nodded and began to deliver the first of these so-called chores without hesitation. Growth struggles to be achieved without presence. Offer me that which embodies the emotion you would provide for your daughter. It's like the, um, what's it called? Was it Rapunzel? I think it's Rapunzel. It's like the Rapunzel story. Also, just like a quick thing. I like, I like this, uh, top right. There's a, um, music bar. I don't know. It just adds to the atmosphere because it gives a little bit of a retro vibe. But so far, it looks pretty nice. Um, also, if I give them the emotion you would provide to your daughter, love, maybe. What if I don't have love to give to my daughter? That'd be bad for her. The recluse pondered for a moment, thinking of what they had to offer. A tear-stained portrait, a little stone lawn ornament, a prized gem fragrant. If I'm giving something- oh, well, that, that is what it is. <laughs> um, I was planning on giving them that anyway, I think. A buried memory was retrieved from the recluse's nightstand, the hope that was that the subject's lonesome lilac leer would provide their daughter a humbling understanding of mortality to enrich their view on life. Returning to the witch, the recluse had out th held out their offering. My, I suppose all growth comes at a cost, no? Feeling a tender hollowness, the recluse declined to answer. The second day, the recluse slept more soundly that night than they had in ages. Yeah, cause got that child coming in, man. Having a purpose again soothed them, even if they had found themselves caught up with a witch. They elected not to think about that, though. Instead, when the morning came, they simply did what they had to do. Which is to say, they got up and went to meet with the witch. Upon watching the recluse's approach, a sardonic smile lit the witch's face. You completed your first task admirably. Two more and I can finally give you what you want. 
She paused only for a moment before delivering her next message of import. There are some... Mm -hmm, activities I've been meaning to get to. Perhaps you could make yourself useful and cross one off the list for me. Not realizing that they were simply saving the witch some time, the recluse determined which task they were most suited for. Test of selection of elixirs for quality, restock of unsettling components, neutralize her most dangerously volatile, oh, volatile regions. Hmm, probably this. Surely, the witch wouldn't offer anything that could kill or maim, right? The recluse tried to clear their head of worries as they carefully sipped. In the end, they did walk away safely, at the very least. Arriving back to their meeting point, the recluse was excited to report their progress to the witch. Ah, very good. How kind of you. I just realized Meat Daughter has a smiley face. Okay. After quickly wiping themselves down, the recluse returned to their hut for the remainder of the night. The third day. With two assignments complete, the recluse could feel their excitement grow. If this witch was being honest, and for some reason they felt that she was, then that meant that this could be the last night they spent without a child. They hoped so, at least, and that was all they could do. If anything, I'd just do some little deeds for the witch. Barely remembering to get dressed, the recluse dashed to the meeting spot. Again, the witch had been waiting there for them. Welcome back, recluse. Are you prepared? Today's your big day, is it not? The last task is an easy one, or at least I believe so. Bring me something colorful, something bright that you think would suit her. When they were first told of the three tasks, the recluse had imagined these things would be more difficult. This seemed so easy as if to be a trick. Which, they suppose, only meant they should take it seriously, as if a mistake could mean death. With death in mind, the recluse needed to decide where to search for color. A field of flowers? And a stony river? I'm giving you a field of flowers, my child. If someone wanted color, where else were there, was there to even consider? The recluse decided to make their way to a particularly idyllic field of flowers. The field was filled with an overwhelming amount of choice. Before long, the recluse narrowed the option down to a few. Mmm, powerful red bloom for cardinal red flowers, bleeding hearts, sanguine, and symbolic drops. Forget-me-nots, light-hearted blue florets. What's that? <laughs> a pumpkin? <gasps> oh no, a pumpkin in my flower field. Black pansies, a Stygian own. I think I would do forget-me-nots. A cerulean sea of forget-me-nots bobbed with the gentle breeze. Fitting for a moment that would never be forgotten, the recluse plucked one, gently storing it in their pocket. <gasps> discovered blue! I discovered the color blue! Whoa! <laughs> the recluse returned to the witch's hut colored item in hand. She silently took the object, nodding her head to the recluse in recognition. The recluse stood there for a moment, unsure, before finally the witch realized what they expected. Oh ho ho! You want your promised daughter, don't you? Her voice was almost mocking, but at least it was not overtly cruel. I suppose I must tell you that I lied, human. I do require several more trifling things from you. First is the matter of payment. The Riku should have known that everything is for a cost. Mm -hmm. Pay me now with wealth. Pay me now with life. Pay me sometime soon in larger quantities. Pay me at a much later date in the way I choose. Um... I feel like... I don't have wealth as a recluse, personally. I feel like the best thing to do would be pay me now life. Because if anything, and I have a daughter, I'll live out the rest of my life with my daughter. Though I guess that would mean that I would have a very limited time with my daughter. But that just feels right, given that it feels like the recluse would probably go their whole life just, like, wanting a daughter from this point on if they, like, 
wealth wealth just doesn't feel right for a daughter you know what i mean it doesn't feel right to just like pave with with money they told the witch that they would offer life as payment certainly stepping forward she took them in a cold yet not unkind embrace they awoke hours later with an uneasy feeling that something was missing. The witch was still there waiting for the recluse. I think it's some of my life force. With the payment settled, the witch simply smiled and handed the recluse a small pot. Humans are... tricky, but mushrooms are much more resilient. Consider this an upgrade. Don't worry, eventually she will develop a mind. Simply give her time, as much as she needs. Soon, your wish will be in full bloom. I suppose with all that settled, though, there's one thing for you to consider. A young girl needs a proper name. The recluse thought of the witch's demand before offering the final, the final thing they had to give. A name? What is her name? <laughs> if you give me customization options, I will always take way too long on them. They were forget-me-nots. Let's see. It'd be so funny if I just named them Musume. Hmm. I feel like a Diana. But, mmm, Diana feels a little bit too... Outworldly. Even though this is a mushroom child, Diana feels a little bit too... Up in the stars, right? I feel like I want a more... I'll go with Noah. Noah feels right. Then she walked away. Only fate knowing if the two would ever meet again. Chapter 2. Cultivisa- cultivation. <laughs> cultivation. What the heck is that? Though the recluse was unsure of the specifics, they did realize that it was important to heed her instructions. Care for the pot and the dirt and everything that lay within. So the recluse geared up, as any parent should, and assessed the things they need to raise a child. Let me check this real quick. I just want to know what it is. Um, uh, no, I don't want to change my color. I'm good. How do I get out? <laughs> X. Finances, in case that the nearby village had goods or services that you could not provide. Nutrients for the child to help it grow strong. They would need plenty as it would be depleted on a daily basis. And finally, the recluse's own stamina could not be ignored. One cannot burn the candle from both ends indefinitely. Thus began the longest growing season of the recluse's life. The day... Okay, stamina is one finance, eight, nutrient, okay. The, ga the day has gotten away from you. Already the sun's gentle descent is being swallowed before the, day the forest is reach. You weren't able to finish everything you set out for today, but you only have time for one more chore. Barter for some fine substrates to, grow, to better grow your daughter. You've already worked hard enough, retired to the tavern. Finish a favor the village's leader asked of you. Purchase new construction materials. I think... Mm, let's go with this first, just to like prepare. I feel like the first day the daughter might be fine. Right? Yeah, that's my child. A blue mushroom. But I think she should be fine for now. Doing favors for the leader is comfortable to you. It allows more flexibility while you're still giving while still giving you some funds. Mmm, that's a, that's double money for me. Oops, I missed the book dialogue. Today is no different different than usual. You heard some cats for the leader, and in exchange, they pay you. How novel! Your task behind you. You and your daughter return home. Each do a nice bath and a simple dinner. I just imagine getting like a towel and just like s very softly caressing, like cleaning the mushroom. You haven't been taking very good care of yourself and you find yourself so worn out that even leaving the house is a challenge. If you continue on without regards to your stamina, you might as well die. Then... Let us... My child is fine for now, so let us go stay in bed. You'll be of no use to your daughter in this state, so you decide to spend the day resting. Sitting in bed, you think about your daughter and all the tasks you'll get done tomorrow. The decision being made, life continued. 
Huh? Something's happening. <laughs> That's my beautiful child! Look at my child! Oh, they're so- they're actually so cute. Like, no- no joke. They're actually so cute. <laughs> Your daughter has changed at night. One day, you awaken suddenly, discovering that your mushroom has gained enough limbs to propel themselves across the house. The creature toddles on unsteady legs, bumping into objects noisily, and a cute face now shows a vacant expression. Her demeanor seems pensive and unsure, sometimes staring long at unfamiliar objects. Oh my god, look at my child in the mirror! Okay, sorry. Spend time nurturing her environment. Motivate her to do something- I think- I think I want to encourage her thoughtfulness. Undeveloped and feral. Um, yeah, let us encourage her thoughtfulness. Look at my child on the left, though! Look at her! Your daughter's development is going better than expected, and you want to promote her inquisitive nature. I don't want to stifle her, you know? You gather a collection of unusual things from around your house for her to look at, such as nooks, antiques, and broken tools. She continues to observe the things you bring to her for long hours, seemingly finding some enrichment in the activity. The decision being made, life continued. One evening, you hear a light knocking at your door. Quite a rare occurrence, given that I am, basically, a hermit. Peeking through the window, you witness none other than the Witch of the Woods standing on the doorway of your humble hut. Could she be here for a visit, or to settle a debt? Introduce her to your daughter. Privately request- Ah, uh, look at my kid! Look at how good my kid is growing! Perhaps it was time for your daughter to meet the witch. She could maybe even learn a thing or two. The two of you answer the door and invite the gloomy woman inside for dry and awkward small talk. Something about the way you two absently stare at each other. You wonder if- Oh, sorry. Something about the way the two absently stare at each other. You wonder if they've made some sort of connection already. The decision being made, life continued. Oh, I should check on my kid. Affection, excellent in quality. Ooh, our child's having a good life. Mystic bond. You have to sell up some rapport with a character. Okay, mushroom limbs. Okay. While sitting at home one day, you hear an unexpected knock at your door. Unfortunately, when you go to answer, you find yourself face to face with a man you never wish to see again. Though he was older now, the scar running down his cheek was unmistakable. It took me a while to find you this time, Recluse. The sound of his voice sent a long forgotten chill down your spine. This man is your former business partner from a time where you did work that was less than admirable. I'm sure all this time alone's given you plenty of time to reflect. Are you finally ready to get back to business? Kill the man, beg the man to leave you alone. Agree to do business with the man. Give the man a significant sum of money to go away. Um. 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 I. I'm not gonna kill the man. I think if I kill the man, the organization that I used to work with could probably come for me. Beg the man to leave me alone. I'm not sure if that would work. Agree to do business with the man. I don't want. I don't want my child to grow up in a violent environment. Give the man a significant sum of money to go away. I don't know if I have enough money for that. That's the thing. My finances seem like a lot, but I don't know how much a significant sum is. Um, let's see. I, I'll see if I have enough money. You've known this man long enough to understand what he truly desires, money. Perhaps if you offer him some, he would agree to leave you alone. When you explain this line of thought out loud, his eyes sparkle. You've always known me so well. You quickly gather an amount of gold that you hope will satisfy him in a pouch, then place the pouch in his hand. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. As he leaves, you tell him to never return. Oh, that wasn't as much money as I thought. I think I'm safe for now. But I still need to take care of my child. Huh? Something's happening. Look at my child! My child! Sorry. She's just so cute. Your child changed at the night. Look at her! 
One morning, you notice that your daughter is nowhere to be seen. After an hour of searching the nearby area, you find her sitting alone in a familiar clearing. To your surprise, the creature had now taken the form of a young girl. You feel relieved to confirm the witch hadn't betrayed you. As you approach, she turns and smiles at you before continue, continuing to thoughtfully stare into space. Sit with her in silence, buy her a nice gift to celebrate, tell her it's time to go home. I'll, I'll chill with my kid. But let me check. Whimsical and personable. What is this? Mushroom growth? Uh, you have seen mushrooms have a special gleam. Your daughter does not have that gleam, but she could if you raise them right. Chai Child? Despite a rocky in introduction, your daughter is as civil as a human child now. Okay. You do wonder what your daughter is thinking about so intently, but you decide not to disturb her. Taking a seat next to her, you appreciate the beauty of the forest and spend the time thinking lovingly of your daughter. After nearly an hour, she stands up and heads back home, seemingly finished with her introspection. The de decision being made, life continued. Your daughter needs food and you've just run out. You need to find something to feed her soon or she'll sur surely starve. Can't have a starving child. Um, I have time, I have some stamina. Spend the day gathering nutrient substrate. You spend the day foraging and digging in the woods and return with a heap of mushroom food for your hungry daughter. It's a little hard to be sure, but it seems like she's thankful for your efforts. The decision being made, life continued. You realize that you finished all your work for the week and have a whole day free. Take your daughter, teach her and daughter some important land. Spend some time cleaning up, take your daughter on a scenic hike. Is my daughter old enough that she would register my lessons? Give me a sec. Um, info. You seem to be doing fine. Your nutrients are okay. I think I'll take my daughter on a scenic hike. I think she can learn. Hmm, but I think it's better to instill this young, actually. I, I, I'll go with some important lessons. You decide it would be good use of your time to spend the day teaching. Your daughter doesn't really like to sit and listen, but you manage to impart some life lessons. The decision being made, life continues. And end? It had been many strange weeks since the witch had gifted you an enchanted pot of dirt. It felt like much longer. You had perhaps underestimated the amount of effort it would take to rear a child. The long days and nights tolling for her every night, le or every, every, for every, oh, ooh, 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 I've goofed. The long days and nights toiling for her every need left you drained. And the constant aching tiredness made it difficult to be present for your daughter. You suspected you weren't the role model a growing child needed. Oh, you sat down with a mug of ale, readying yourself for another night of restlessness. I forgot to mention, ah, I forgot to keep track of my stamina. Maybe in the morning things would be easier. Discovered and a new beginning? You suspected for a long time that your time with the recluse was coming to an end. They raised you, you suppose, but it felt like you were trapped, like you were being kept locked away, unwanted and forgotten. But you're older now. You have the ability to fend for yourself. There's no reason to stay where you weren't wanted. I'm so sorry, my child! <laughs> Your preparation has been underway for a while, and you've made a little place for yourself to live in the woods. Tomorrow's the day to act on your plan. And while the path ahead of you seems a little frightening, things can only get better from here. Maybe in the morning you'll find yourself able to see for yourself. No, I'm sorry! Oh no, I'm so sorry. Chapter 3, A Girl on Her Own. The mountain bordering the northern reaches of the forest call to you. You see them every day on your adventures, and there's an overwhelming desire to climb them that simply can't be ignored. Readying yourself in the early hours of the morning, you glance over the materials you have on hand. Pack light? Pack heavy? Don't pack. I think I should, uh, pack light. <laughs> nope. I think I should pack light. Maybe. I don't know what each one does. 
Oh, hello, my slimy child. Parrot wax cap. Slime form. Oh, you are a slimy child. This body is made of something slick and magical. People are more likely to love you. You are extremely prone to suggestion. Chefs throughout the land envy. Envy your delicate... I cannot be eaten. I refuse to be eaten. Don't like an event? Use one of the cards and you might be... Wealth? Everything in this world comes for a price. Food. About me. Relative obscurity. Family matters. Your parent was not as kind to you as you deserve. Now you are alone and free. I'm so sorry, kiddo. I'm so sorry. A beautiful slime covered mushroom with a gem-like appearance. Let's pack light. You pack light. Maybe a bit too light. You can't shake the feeling that made you forgot something. Uh, oops. Oops, I rolled bad. <laughs> with the pack all set, you make your way out to the mountain. I guess it's a little bit of a... Was it a, like a RPG kind of thing at this point? Um, after a couple hours of climbing, you feel like you've made some decent progress, though you're starting to feel a bit tired. Just as you think it's time for a break, you come across a beautiful mountain spring, complete with its own waterfall. Take a relaxing shower, train your endurance. Um, let's take a shower. Please, not a one. Eight, good. No one's around, and you do feel awfully sweaty from all your exertion. You take this as a prime opportunity to briefly refresh yourself under the waterfall. The water is frigid, but the icy touch is almost invigorating. You wash away any and all muggy exhaustion and leave with a spring in your step. After you rest, you continue up the trail to the mountain's peak. The air thins and trees become sparse. You've reached the top. You can see the whole region from up here. Myriad hamlets, roadways winding between them, and beautiful mountain ranges. But one peak in particular stands out to you, the only mountain in the region taller than the one under your feet. Far to the east, beyond the village, across from the old ruins, the great mountain calls for you. A burning urge wells up inside you. Maybe someday you'll conquer that one as well. Sit in silence, watch from the tower watch the town from above. Um, our humanity's okay, so let us sit in silence. You close your eyes and reflect on your life and the things you've seen on this trip. Your time at the top of the mountain had come to an end. When you arrived home, you sprawl out onto your bed, exhausted from your adventure. While tending to your home, you begin to feel an otherworldly pull towards the forest. You can't resist, and moments later... You find yourself surrounded by trees and standing in front of a mushroom-covered hut. Deep within you, you know the witch that made you resides here. Enter the hut with hopes of learning magic, force yourself to turn around and quickly head home. Um, enter the hut cautiously and treat her as a stranger. Let us see. I don't think I would flee. I think I would... I don't think she would hurt me. Because it said the witch was like, when we talk to the witch at least, it seems that she's just a very awkward person. If anything, not awkward, but she's very um distant, but it's not like she's cruel. You enter the hut and bow respectfully, addressing the witch as you would app apprentice to a master. She accepts your want for knowledge and begins tutoring you. Time moves strangely in these woods and you're unsure how long you read scrolls and practice channeling. By the time you leave, though, you find you've gained slight control over your magical potential. Witchling. I'm a witchling. I'm a witchling. You are touched by magic in some significant way. I'm a witchling. I can do magic. Walking around the village one day, you overhear a gaggle of fun-sized, fun-sized humans giggling the time away. You gradually sneak up to them and get close. Remarkably close. They don't seem to care that you're there. Hey, wait, are they ignoring you on purpose? The nerve of these fleshies. At least you can listen in to whatever they seem to be- that whatever seems to be so engrossing. How much? One of the kids exclaims, her 
jaw dropped in sheer awe of the other kid, whose chest is proudly puffed out. With a grin, the child reiterates, enough to buy three bags of candy. No fair, another child cries out. When I lost mine, all she brought me was a, enough for a hoop and a stick. The other kids look at the child with pity. Hoop and stick was so last season. Well, anyway, the boastful kid continues. I have another one loose, so I can expect even more candy here soon. I think it's because you're eating too much candy, kiddo. It's soon. That's not fair. I want to lose a tooth. You're younger than me. What gives? It's probably because of all the candy, one of the kids said. Getting met with only a shrug from the proud child as he snacked on his treats. Whatever. I'm going home and pulling my tooth out myself. And when you see me, I'll have four bags of candy. The girl stormed off, determined to come in into some coin of her own. Which is odd when you think about it. Do these kids get money for their teeth? Do they sell their other parts? No, child, they don't sell their organs. But I guess you don't have a parent to play the tooth fairy for you. You wonder briefly about the value of a kidney when you hear one of the gremlins shout, Be sure to put it under your pillow! Does... Does my child have a kidney? Aha, uh -huh, you realize. There's a caveat. One must need a tooth, and then store it under their pillow, and then... Money? Last you checked, what you consider your teeth grow back after some time. This would prove to be a very lucrative venture. At length, you return home and find yourself less certain about this than you were in the village. It's not like the fun-sized humans are known for their honesty. You pause a moment and think. One tooth won't kill you. Go for it. Decide against it. Nope. Um, is nope? What is nope? I need to actually... Don't like an event? Use one of these cards and be on your way back home in no time. Though you won't be able to use special cards at every event, they will be automatically dealt. Be careful. Most cards are time limited. When they're out, they're out. Unless you can find a way to gain more. Okay. Um... I'm okay. I think I think I want to indulge in this child childishness. Not wanting to put any more time in attempting to convince yourself otherwise, you reach up into your mouth and grab hold of what passes in your body as a tooth. Slowly and steadily, ooh, pressure builds as you pull and then stop, a tooth breaks off easily, like a bar of chocolate. But oh mycelium, so much worse. What is that? Regardless, you're now in the possession of a detached tooth and are eager to see what comes with resting it under your pillow. You're now- you snap awake in the middle of the night, your first thought of being what lays beneath your pillow. But when you check, you find nothing. Not even your tooth remains. So you're awake then, eh? When a small voice chimes from the center of your room. Glancing over, you spot an ill-tempered fairy and their few companions. See, here's the thing. You's put a pillow under the pillow. Pill you've you's put a tooth under the pillow. All fine and fair, till that tooth turns out to taint be a tooth. The group of Fae all stare you down. You suspect it's for the best to remain silent and listen to the big palooka up front. Now, I'm a reasonable guy. I clock in, I clock out, and I don't want no trouble no how. But the issue here is that the boss lady ain't too keen on these types of shenanigans. Now, I can see you're just an innocent mushroom lady, a mush lady, and so this ordeal can be overlooked this time. Unfortunately, we ain't able to give back that tooth of yours. Company practice, capiche? Um, that's okay, they grow back. Keep it, pretty sure that one was rotten. That's okay, they grow back. Well, yes, that's how teeth work. At least once. You got your baby teeth and your adult teeth. No, they just grow back. Ah, uh, they... what? The fairy appears incredulous, and his companions volley fascinated whispers between themselves. You say you've got a replenishable supply? You shrug. Well, essentially you do. It's not particularly pleasant to lose teeth, but it is technically doable. The fairies all pause for a moment. <laughs> the teeth, the gears noticeably turning in their mouth. I don't want to be sold off to the tooth fairy factory. <clears throat> hey, so, uh, sorry for any unpleasantries earlier. Boss lady just, mm, 
really wanted the message clear, you know? But, uh, she did also have a... The fairly glances at his own companions, with each in turn offering Blake stares. Right, uh, she's got a particular taste, it would seem. What did he just say? You know, shaved over some food, it's like a, a nice mushroom powder. And, you know, if you've got a seemingly infinite supply, I, uh... The fairy begins fidgeting on his own person, and his companions all seem suddenly much more intrigued by her abilities. Here, take this. The fairy pulls out an adorably small business card from his pocket, handing it over. You look it over. These are words on the front and on the back, it seems. Is that a number? I'm pretty sure that's a number. Do we have funds? I don't know if we do. Though if it is, it's really long. Wow. The fairy in charge catches your confusion and upon realizing the situation, procures a different card. Oh, I see. Maybe it's like a, a realm hopping kind of fairy? Because you don't have like a phone. I'm pretty sure back there maybe they don't have a phone either. Maybe? So, I can't call them, <laughs> is what I'm saying. This one simply has a crude picture of someone kicking multiple mushrooms arranged in a circle. Give us a ring sometime, you hear? The main fairy says. Looking back at the artwork, you can't help but feel like it's a hate crime. But upon looking back up, you'll realize the fairies have vanished without a trace. Only the lingering smell of bad aftershave and latent fairy stink remains. Unsatisfied with the lack of reward under your pillow, and annoyed by the usual fairy shenanigans, you attempt to go back to sleep. Maybe you'll check out that Tooth Fairy's deal someday. Until then, however, it's the middle of the night and sleep beckons. Gained fey business. Ooh. Fairy business. Okay, my child is childing. Family matters. Inventory. About me. Magic acquired. Your touch magic. Okay, that's the witch. You feel a crisp breeze. The heat is relenting and trees are changing in color. Fall has arrived. While walking down a heavily wooded path, you notice a disheveled woman slump mournfully against the base of a tree. She bears numerous scratches and light wounds, as well as particularly cold black lips. Her clothes are torn and dirty, but despite this, you can tell they were once quite expensive. Curiosity piqued, you approach the woman, asking if she needs help with something. The woman grimaces, shaking her head. Nothing can be done for me. I've been sentenced to death. As she speaks, you notice her tongue is stained, as if she's been licking ink. You can't help but feel intrigued, so you insist. What does she mean? A few weeks ago, I was walking through these woods when I witnessed the most beautiful woman I'd ever known picking flowers alone. I'm ashamed to say I was so taken by her stunning looks that I followed the woman, aiming to at least ask her name. I discovered far too late, however, that it was no woman, but the witch of the woods herself. Your eyes widen. Few humans would ever, would even speak of the witch. To follow her into the forest is regarded as, well, a death sentence. I know not if it was a punishment or fulfillment of my unspoken request, but upon my approach, she twisted around and met me with a terrifyingly intense kiss. When I came around again, I bore a terrible curse. She visibly trembles, pulling out the tattered ends of her elegant dress. Solid cobbles seem to shift under my feet, and steady tools writhe like snakes in my grasp, conspiring to be dropped. I've been doomed to fail at all things. I've lost my work, my coin, and cannot even prepare food or forage without injuring myself. It has reached the point where I can do nothing but sit here and await. She trails off, pursing her blackened lips. Again, the doom lady falls against the tree, staring blankly. It's apparent she's utterly, utterly lost her will to go on. A cursed kiss from the witch of the woods? How unexpected. Ask her to give the curse to you with a kiss, decline to interfere with the witch's business, tell her to pursue her romance with the witch, attempt to dispel the curse. Um, look. <laughs> Look, if they're being real, mine is, mine is freaking well, you know, 
tell her to pursue a romance with the witch. If she's gonna die, at least she can try. The lady is clearly missing the most important part here. The witch is totally into her. Please, 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 please. Yes! Okay, you tell her that the curse is a mark of affection, a black rose bequeathed to her beloved. The ways in which witch's court is beyond our understanding and might even seem painful at times. She continues for a moment, her face reddening. You really think she loves me that much? You nod enthusiastically. Who is more qualified to make guesses at the witch's intentions than you? With renewed resolve, the, the girl, oh, the woman, gathers the last of her things and departs into the woods. As she disappears between the trees, clutching a bright red rose in her hands, she resembles a sacrifice being made to the woods. I'm sorry if you die, lady. You do hope the witch treats her kindly after all. I hope that was a good choice. Maybe. My potency is higher than I remember. The sun is low in the sky, casting a beautiful warm tint across everything you saw. Today is a particularly beautiful sight. Blossoming fruit trees and the wind blowing through grass. Your eyes feel heavy and suddenly you find yourself falling into a deep sleep. In your dreams, you're sitting on a tree branch. There's a flute playing somewhere. Then suddenly, the flute is next to you. Attached to it is a vague shape of a woman. I haven't seen you around here. Welcome. Whenever you, whenever you go to look at her, it feels like she shifts. You can't quite describe her. You probably won't remember me when you wake up, but it's nice to meet you. After sitting in silence for a moment, she starts playing again. Try to memorize this place. Where do you go when I'm awake? Sing along. Fly? Um, where do you go? Where do you go when I'm awake? Oh, here and there, really. There's usually someone asleep somewhere, so I have no shortage of options. I must admit, I've not met many people like you. Perhaps I'll return someday if you'll have me. Before you have a chance to reply, your eyes are opening. It's dark out. You should probably be getting home. While out running errands, you find that the town is much more active than usual. Through some chance encounters, you get the impression that a sort of traveling festival has been set up outside the town. Looking around, you do happen to spot a few people in very vibrant clothes. Out of curiosity, you follow them towards a gathering of colorful tents. As you stand there gawking, you get the feeling that you've wandered into the entertainer's living area rather than finding your way to the show itself. The people are practicing a routine, people tossing colored rods back and forth, a man sharpening, sharpening knives, as well as a large number of other eccentric activities. Get closer to look at the jugglers, ask a particularly muscular human for training tips, approach the colorfully clothed couple rehearsing lines, ask the man about his knives, Talk to the man wearing a sparkling cape. Will I gain a spell? Is that what this is? Is that what this is? Do I gain a spell if I talk to the cape man? I'll talk to the cape man. Hmm. Some manner of enchanter? You definitely need to check this out. You approach the cape man doing tricks. As you get closer, his attention is immediately drawn to you. He greets you with a deep bow and a subtle wave of his hand. Would you like to see some magic, milady? He asks. Being a creature of magic yourself, you excitedly accept his offer of a little show. The man does a couple of flashy tricks, but you notice that they are all based on sleight of hand, not real magic. You bring this up, then cast a little bit of sparkling magic yourself just to show off a little. The man is taken aback at first, but then grins. Ah, oh, so you are a mage as well. Let us exchange knowledge. I promise I can show you some real tricks. The two of you compare magic for a bit, and true to his word, the magician shows you some minor illusions to add to your magical repertoire. Minor illusion! Ooh! A chilling breeze greets you one morning, heralding the approach of winter. The end of the year approaches, and you find yourself considering your aspirations. You want to accomplish something significant, you decide, something you'll remember. Take on a dangerous quest? Attend a charming evening at the gala? Pursue a great aspiration. I think, I think galas are not my child's thing, but I, I'll actually, 
Do you have anything you specifically like, child? Because I am you, but... Oh, I should check this. How good of a person she is. Increased. Uh, this is her strength. This stat is her physical strength. Wait, strength of her mushroom type. Okay, I see. Increased by the right nutrients and by things that nourish the soul. Healthy child. Mm, the murkiness of her soul. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Okay. Got it. Um, I think let's go pursue a great aspiration. There's something you want to accomplish, actually. You need a great achievement to end the year on a high point. Conquer the Great Mountain. Take a tooth. <laughs> take the Tooth Syndicate up on their offer. Actually, never mind. Let's go. We saw the mountain earlier. We said we would conquer it. Let's conquer the mountain. The last mountain you scaled proved to be a fun challenge, and your heart burns with ambition. You recall seeing a taller mountain, a more perilous and remote peak far to the east. Preparations will take some time, but you're determined to conquer the mountain before the end of the year. While sitting outside near your garden and taking in the fresh air, you hear the call of a crow, then another, and another. You look up to find a rather large group of sleek black birds perched in the trees above you. A few are eyeing your garden, while others are just birding around as, you know, birds are wont to do. Feed the crow some spare scrap, scare them off. Just watch them for a bit. Um, I'm not quite sure what this thing do i have to oh i see wait i might have to pay for each one i see okay i'll just watch them it's fine you decide to just sit and watch the birds for a bit it's kind of fun watching how they move and interact with each other you see them preening each other bickering pooping and calling eventually they leave and you head outside having enjoyed your viewing bird watcher sometimes when you lay down to go to sleep you find yourself remembering a dream you had there was a woman there who said you probably won't remember her but for some reason you do in fact so much that you would like to see her again you know she's not real but something's fun about that you suppose an imaginary friend that you visit like a real one one day you make your way back to the same spot you first met her the meadow with the flowering trees in your hands, you grasp a flower, a polite request for company. You're not sure if it'll help, but that's the only thing you can think to do. Then finally, you just have to fall asleep in time and easy feet. As you wait peacefully, you hear a sound you recognize. I'm impressed. Most people don't think about me twice. You sit with her for a few moments. Are you real? Have you always been like this? Can we go somewhere else? Have you always been like this? Hmm, I suppose not. There was a time before this. I lost something important to me, and I came here to get it back. I didn't mean for it to consume me like it did, I suppose. I just got a little greedy is all. My advice is not to be greedy. Whatever you want is never quite as good as it seems. But there's no reason to dwell on that. Let's just enjoy the view. You decide to follow her advice, and the rest of your dream is pleasant. One day, while gathering some resources from the forest, you realize the sun has gone and set on you. You hadn't been a, 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 you hadn't been anticipating a night trip, so this is a little unfortunate. Thankfully, you can spot a fire on the road ahead. It appears to you that a single man is sitting next to it, with a worn tent set up nearby. The man bears a distinctive set of tattoos, spotting his face and arms with a set of decorative, presumably, eyes. You contemplate the thought of approaching this man and keeping yourself warm beside his fire. Does this appeal to you? Join the man? You can make your own way. I don't see what's wrong with joining the man specifically. He might be scary. I wish there was an option to like peek at him and watch him, but let's join the man. He might be a good conversation. It's dark and you have nothing on you to create a camp. You figure that it's acceptable to ask, if nothing else. As you approach the man, he seems immediately aware of your presence. Welcome, daughter of the witch. He speaks calmly, identifying you more precisely than Mez. You'd, 
You idly think that it's unfair to call you a daughter of the witch. The witch did not raise you after all. Though it could be said that the recluse barely did either. So who's to say? Nevertheless, you ask the man if you can join him. It's a dark night and you have left yourself stranded. Thankfully, he seems sympathetic to your plight. What is mine is yours, fellow Fay touched. He pauses. Though you may find I do not have much to offer. You eye his meager campsite. Fire and company will have to get you through the night, it seems. Well, I'm down for company. But you do spy a variety of small, strange trinkets. Some part of you suspects that they are fortune-telling in nature. What do you do with the remnants of the evening? I'd like to ask the man to teach you his craft. Um, ask him for nothing more than what you already have. He speaks to you familiarly. Help him in his place. I'm not going to put him in his place. I'm not going to put him in his place. Ask the man to teach you a spell. Hmm... Ask him for nothing more than you already have. I need to check if I have very limited spells. Because I think I do. Oh, see? Yeah, I, I only have a limited amount, I think. Oh, mm, Or... You know what? Can you teach me your craft? Admittedly, something about this man has piqued your interest. You wish to have what he has, so to speak. Practically, before you can open your mouth to plead your case, the man speaks. Of course. This divination is not mine alone, and it would be selfish to keep it from you. See, he's a nice dude. Just because he has tattoos doesn't mean I shouldn't talk to him. To disclose the mysteries of his lesson would, of course, be quite gauche. Gauche? Gosh. But thankfully, you find him to be a good teacher. By the time the two of you are allowed the fire to go out the next morning, you found that you had the seeds to learn a new craft. Goodbye, daughter of the witch. Perhaps someday our paths will cross again. I hope so, he seems chill. And characteristically, he gives you a toothy smile. That seems like a joke that he has yet to let you in on. You'd simply have to practice to your new ability and try to divine if he knows something you do not. The winter cuts through you with the latent memories of a childhood long abandoned. You stand now, braced at the foot of the Grey Mountain. Resolute, I got this. It's not a matter of personal pride, but an intrinsic necessity, born into life and born of the earth. To lay idle at the footbed of Mother Nature's playground is to fester in stagnation. At least that's what you tell yourself. With your gear packed, your gaze high above at the towering monument, a competition is about to take place, a festival of tenacity against indomitable might. The straps dig in, but you shift your weight and readjust. Before you, a plume of smoke floats leisurely out the chimney of a cabin built at the mountain's base camp. The warmth of spices cut through the frigid air as it blows on the wind. With earnest ambition, you approach the cabin's door, kick the snow off from the underfoot, and meander your way inside. To your surprise, it's rather crowded. Murmurings of untrodden paths and terrifying obstacles echo through the building. Well, I can win. I'd win. I, I look, I am an earth child. I was, if you're born from the earth, it, I can't, I can't say I'm the recluse anymore. I can't say I am the neglectful parent anymore. So I'm going to say I am the child, okay? I am Noah. This is me, Noah. Three letters, three letters. It all works out. Anyways. If I am this child, I am born from Earth. The Earth calls for me. I will beat this mountain. The mountain is made from Earth. In the corner, the elderly proprietor, proprietor stares forlornly at a babbling group at this room center. While you have the supplies and nerve, I think, verve? Nerve? Verve? Nerve? Verve? Verve? Verve to carry forward up the mountain. You sense that perhaps sticking around the base camp for a time would prove valuable. Ascend the mountain, proposition the group for teamwork, look around and keep to yourself. Let's, let's, uh, let's ascend the mountain. You know what? I think I can do it. Pass? Yes. Seizing the opportunity of your own momentum, you duck out and skip past the hut and continue your way up the mountain. 
It's not too difficult of a trek, a bit uneven here and there with some strange rock outcropping that takes skill not to slip on, but I am a, I am a well-learned expert mountain trekker. Suddenly, you find your nerves catching up with you and continue to push, push forward until you come across a split in the road. Off the beaten path lies a cave that is far, far too dark for you to make your way safely through. In front of you, the main path continues, though a sign nearby depicts a beast further along your path and recommends an alternate route via the cliff face just off to your left. It would take some endurance to climb, but it seems doable. Mm, take the main path, scale the cliff. Um, I think I could take the beast. The main path goes for some ways. I learned magic. Even though it's not great magic, I learned some magic. The main path goes for some ways, winding left and right, marked only by long weathering poles topped with tattered flags that line the way. Oh, the beast. You are a unicorn with a lot of legs. Hmm. <laughs> a little bit of an eldritch being, ain't ya? After a period of time, you catch movement in the distance and see it. An equine? Equine? I know it's like equestrian, so equine. Beast of a dozen legs, skin protruding in heavy metal plates, covered in like barding. Oh, covering it like barding and glittering in the sun. Top its head, you spy a grotesque helical horn, stained black with blood. Swallowing hard, you steal your nerves, but question just how effective you could be against the beast. Before you fully second-guess yourself, however, the beast set takes notice of you and charges. Life's not really an option against the beast with more legs than you have shucks to give, so fight it is. The distance between you and the beast is enough to give you a handful of seconds just long enough to brace for impact from the beast. With incredible speed, the beast is upon you. And as luck would have it, the ice plays in your favor and sends you sliding swiftly around and behind it. <laughs> Fluidly, fluidly, you utilize your moment. <laughs> I was thinking of the um, Omaiwa mo Shinderu, but I don't know if that's- I haven't watched the show, so I don't even know if that's the right thing to say. Fluidly, you utilize your movement and hoist yourself on the beast. What comes next must be quick, decisive. Fighting against the beast thrashing. You attempt to climb on front only to be hurled up from its hindquarters the second you latch onto its horn. Knights- Hop, 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 what? Knights, what? Did you get a child? Oh, bo -bo -bo -bo. go back, go back. Oh, X, I mean. What did you just get a child? Knights, what? Knights, young adult, reputation, relative obscurity, spells cast two. Okay, but what did I just get? Oh, there we go. The rendered horn blade from a heart steed, a primordial, primordial failsafe. Buried deep in the bowels of each and every dream. Hitting the ground, your arms hurt from being flipped over the front end. But as the hideous sounds of the beast cries, you realize the horn is still in your hand. Ripped from his skull. You thought, you thought. I, I am better than you. <laughs> Glancing behind you, the beast is apoplectic and bleeding profusely from its head. I must have amazing grip strength. You figure this is your best chance at leaving and take the opportunity to do so, continuing up the mountain. Just beyond the stalking grounds of the beast, you find a shimmer in the air, and as you climb further, you notice a tension following by relief. It feels as though you crash through a thre thre threshold, a threshold, and as you feel the relief build, you notice a clarity in the sky and realize you're near the summit of the mountain. Climbing higher and higher, you can feel the excitement swell within you. The top is there, right there. There's a clearing, a caldera perhaps, and that appears small and intimate and would serve as the perfect spot to stake your claim as first cemetery. But as you approach the peak, you realize you're not alone. You are not the first. And from the look of the armored knight standing poised in front of the slate slab altar, great sword position tipped down between the greaves, there are many more before you. It's evident that the knight sees you and carefully he raises his sword. Behind you, you notice the pale visage of a woman. She's laying across the altar, her porcelain hair spilling out and blending seamlessly into the snow all around her. Engage in combat, dissuade the knight. Stand your ground. Um. 
I think I would try to dissuade the knight. I would also be really confused on what's going on. Have I ever seen a ritual? Has my child ever seen a ritual? Who knows? Um, dissuade the knight. As the knight hoists up his armament, you raise a flat palm and command him to stop. Remarkably, he does exactly that. Not wanting to lose momentum, you continue and ask him why it is that he feels the need to attack you. Just as the duty of a knight is to serve to their lord, so too are the lives of the smitten in service of those who hold their hearts. You blink, muttering a polite, excuse me? This is my eternal duty, to protect my world, my everything. I will stop at nothing to silence all who intrude on these slumbering grounds. You open your mouth to speak and you begin to justify your ascent to the knight. Your passion, your practice, your pride. Particularly, you emphasize your capacity for peace as your eyes follow the tip of his blade. You have no desire uh, to cause trouble, you assure him. Your presence here is a simple matter of accomplishment. For a time, it appears as though the knight is enthralled by what you have to say. But as you finish up your rhetoric, he sighs. A deal. He oh, man. A deal, he calls out, as which I have pain to admit. You have indeed moved me, and as such, I'm willing to offer you something special. You pause, curious about the offer. I will allow you to leave this mountain as the first to the summit and return since my arrival. Wait, I will allow you to leave this mountain as the first to summit and return since my arrival? You've been killing people on this path, sir? That ain't bad and that ain't good. But you will not come back here and you will go with the understanding that any tales you tell will ignite a flame of ardor in the ears of those who listen. In any... You send up these slopes shall die at my blade. Do you understand, champion? <laughs> he kind of speaks to me for some reason like that, that coach vibe, right? It's like, you got it, sport? You got this sport? And I'm like, I wish I could go up this mountain. Too bad, too bad. I rolled bad. Then go. Be proud of yourself, but keep humility in check. May your life continue, full and long-lasting. Farewell. Well, while you were able to get to the top of the mountain, feels a little premature. Regardless, you're still alive, so you may as well continue count your blessings on your way back home. As you grow older, you look back over your life. You think back to the witch who created you and can't help but wonder if everything met her expectations. In the end, you're proud of the mushroom woman you'd grown yourself to be. Ending after all this time. Let's go, no! I, wow. <laughs> wow, I did not expect this game to be this good. Okay, so I actually bookmarked Mushroom Musume like a few months ago, maybe. Like, or at least like a month ago, right? And I, all I knew was that, oh, it's gonna be raising a child. And evidently I didn't do that good in doing that. Um, but I, I really like this, this game. Um, it's only- it's still, like, I think being worked on, and I think it's going to be on Steam. It did say earlier on the front screen. But my child grew up well enough. By her own volition, of course, but she did her best, and she ended up doing well for it, you know? Even if she didn't accomplish, like, the really main goal, or, like, the feeling of, uh, like, getting through the mountain because of the night. Boo the night, by the way. Come on, let my child through. It's fine. I think as long as she had a fulfilling life in the end, that's what matters. So, yeah. Also, the UI of this game is so, so pretty. Because having the mushroom, having the mushroom change, basically, depend on what your actions are, like, as a, f a parent, at least at first, like, basically how parents, um, influence their children and then having her because i didn't have a chance to like i think work with this but it says mimicry right i think there was a chance um that oh, maybe not but having a chance to like change as a person even like in the future even with like stats and stuff you know it's basically the process of a human life very very shortened down to the life of like a small mushroom because if you think about what the witch said earlier it was like Oh, it's a simpler version of- it's like easier to take care of than a human, it's simpler than a human. This is basically a very shortened version of a life, right? 
And no, like the UI is super pretty. When I can see my mushroom in a little window in a very like a very cottage-esque window, they have like the task and stuff at the start. And they have the, the jukebox music thing at the top right. And just like all this information. It's, it's great. I like this game. I love this game. Congratulations on finishing your first run of Mushroom Musume. You've discovered one of over 30 endings. 30 endings available in the demo version? Holy shit. We encourage you to experiment a little while growing your next daughter to see how different she can turn out. Be sure to check out your almanac if you want to track your, track your progress. We've got plenty in this demo to keep you busy farming for a while, but I thought I'll tell you a bit about what awaits players in the full game. I thought it was done. So I was gonna do my ending thing, but thank God. See, look, my child on the left, right? My child on the left, they have this little info thing and then it's like a character screen. And they also tell you what kind of mushroom she is. And then they tell you, it's, it's so full of detail. It's so full of detail. And you guys know me, like I'm not a really good person with reading and I don't like reading a lot, a lot, like in each one, but it doesn't feel drab here. It might be because of how they section it. They don't like put chunks of text in each one, but there's such a feeling of simplicity yet being able to very much understand what is going on. Anyways, let us continue looking at what they have in store. We're excited to be working on a new system of mini games for you to play between sessions. Each grown daughter earns you spores, which can be used to purchase mushroomy gardening supplies. Gardening sim? When you grow in your garden, you can help shape future daughters, allowing players a little more control over her outcome, or even eventually allowing you to jump right into the third act. Not in a gardening mood? Then your hard-earned spores can instead be gambled away in exchange for rare goodies. How mysterious. Don't you want to know what you'll get? They've already that- <laughs> they've already got that gotcha element down. We're also hard at work writing. The full game will have double the word count and double the amount of story content, including an expanded overarching plot. Oh, on the topic of plot, I wonder- I still wonder who that dream lady is. And also, by the way, there's already like a bunch of words in this. Because it says that the current demo part has 180,000 words. And there's 30 endings, remember this guys. So there's so many things you could do. Delve into a dungeon, found a town bustling with fungal life, or maybe even destroy the Witch of the Woods for good, if you want. Oh, I wonder if, I wonder if that girl was able to get with the witch, the woman with the blackened lips. Not to mention, never before seen Mushroom Girls, a cavalcade of new music, even some unique collectibles that are something else entirely. We're aiming to release a full game in winter of 2024. <gasps> that's this year! Wait, that's... That's... That's soon. That's soon. Ooh. Ooh. Wishlist us on Steam to keep up with the newest news. Plus, it helps us out a lot. P.S. Since we're going to be buffing the core gameplay loop, players won't be able to transfer their progress from the demo version. You'll get a little bonus in exchange, at least. Just thought you'd like to know. Thanks for playing. Good shit. <laughs> so. So. Oh, password. If you believe you know a magic word to unlock something special, whisper the word. Fuck, I don't know. I'll, I, I have to get back to this game eventually. Not not now, maybe, but but some other time. Um, But that's that's all I got for today. You know, that's. Oh, oh, oh. I would very much recommend this game to you if you're very into like the role playing genre. That's that's just all. Just get, you know, explore the game. See what endings you could get that I can't get. Maybe be a better parent than I was. Um man, I wish I was a better parent to my very gem-like sweet child, my sweet sweet baby. But yeah. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.